Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Cardiovascular disease, CVD, remains the leading cause of death globally, making cholesterol management essential for prevention. Dyslipidemia, particularly high LDLC, is a significant risk factor for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, ASCVD. To address these concerns, new cholesterol management guidelines are being developed, with the potential to make age 40 the threshold for initiating statin therapy. Current recommendations from the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force and Canadian guidelines advocate statin use for adults aged 40 to 75, with one or more risk factors, and a 10-year cardiovascular event risk of 10% or greater. This video explores whether 40 should indeed be the new age for statin therapy, and how updated guidelines may reshape clinical practice. Updated screening criteria in the 2025 guidelines. One of the key updates in the 2025 guidelines is the adoption of non-fasting lipid panels for adults over 40. Traditionally, fasting was required before lipid testing, but studies show that non-fasting samples are just as reliable for assessing cardiovascular risk. This change reflects the fact that most individuals spend the majority of their time in a non-fasting state, making this testing method more physiologically relevant. Non-fasting panels have been validated in studies involving over 300,000 individuals and are particularly useful for patients with metabolic syndrome or diabetes. However, for individuals with very high triglycerides greater than 4.5 millimoles per liter or 398 milligrams per deciliter, Fasting lipid tests remain the preferred method. Another significant update is the revised frequency of cholesterol screening based on individual risk factors. While low-risk adults can be screened every five years, those at higher risk, such as middle-aged adults with multiple risk factors, should be screened every one to two years. For adults aged 65 and older, annual screening is recommended. The 2025 guidelines place greater emphasis on ethnicity as a risk factor, acknowledging that different ethnic groups exhibit distinct lipid profiles and cardiovascular risks. South Asians, for example, are at higher risk for heart disease compared to the general population. Additionally, Japanese individuals may require lower statin doses due to increased sensitivity to these medications. The guidelines encourage culturally tailored screening approaches to account for these variations. The inclusion of ethnic considerations underscores the importance of personalized risk assessments. By recognizing these differences, clinicians can more accurately identify high-risk individuals and intervene earlier to prevent adverse cardiovascular outcomes. Age is a critical factor in cardiovascular risk, with evidence supporting the initiation of statin therapy at age 40. Statins are proven to reduce LDLC levels and, in turn, lower the risk of cardiovascular events. While traditional guidelines base statin initiation on a 10-year cardiovascular risk assessment, data suggest that starting statins earlier could prevent a significant number of cardiovascular events. The Framingham Risk Score, which has long been used to calculate 10-year cardiovascular risk, continues to show age as one of the most important predictors. However, the pooled cohort equations, PCE, became relevant after age 40 indicating that statin therapy should be considered earlier in individuals at elevated risk. Several landmark studies, including HOPE3 and JUPITER, demonstrate the benefits of starting statin therapy at age 40, particularly for those at high risk of cardiovascular disease. These findings highlight the need for more proactive screening and earlier intervention to prevent heart attacks and strokes. Statins indicated conditions in the 2025 guidelines. The guidelines continue to define statin-indicated conditions where therapy is necessary, regardless of calculated cardiovascular risk. For example, patients with greater than or equal to 5 millimoles per liter or greater than 193.5 milligrams per deciliter or those with familial hypercholesterolemia should receive statin therapy. Similarly, adults aged 40 and older with diabetes mellitus particularly those with multiple risk factors or a longer duration of disease, should be started on statins to reduce their cardiovascular risk. Chronic kidney disease, CKD patients, especially those with an EGFR less than 60 milliliters per minute, also fall into the category for statin initiation. 
CKD significantly increases the risk of cardiovascular events, making statin therapy crucial for preventing complications like heart attack and stroke. For individuals with severe hypercholesterolemia who do not respond to maximally tolerated statin therapy, additional treatments like ezetimibe or PCSK9 inhibitors may be considered to further reduce LDLC levels. Emerging Lipid Markers for Risk Stratification Recent guidelines increasingly recognize alternative lipid markers such as apolipoprotein B, APOB, non-HDLC, and lipoprotein A, LPA, as superior predictors of cardiovascular risk. APOB is particularly useful because it directly measures atherogenic particles, offering more precise risk stratification compared to traditional LDLC measurements. Elevated APOB levels indicate a higher concentration of particles that can contribute to plaque formation in the arteries, increasing the risk of heart disease. Similarly, LPA has been identified as an independent risk factor for ASCVD. Elevated lipoprotein A levels are associated with a higher risk of cardiovascular events, and some studies suggest that measuring lipoprotein A can help identify individuals who may benefit from early intervention, particularly with statin therapy. By integrating these markers into the guidelines, clinicians gain a more comprehensive understanding of a patient's cardiovascular risk leading to more accurate decision-making and tailored treatment plans. The 2025 guidelines place a strong emphasis on shared decision-making between clinicians and patients. Statin therapy, while highly effective, is not without its side effects, which can include muscle pain, fatigue, and digestive issues. For this reason, involving patients in the decision-making process is crucial. One approach that has shown promise is the use of cardiovascular age in discussions with patients. By explaining a patient's cardiovascular risk in terms of heart age versus chronological age, clinicians can foster a more intuitive understanding of risk and treatment options. This personalized communication can help patients feel more involved in their healthcare decisions, particularly when the treatment involves lifelong therapy. The 2025 Cholesterol Guidelines propose a paradigm shift by considering age 40 as the new threshold for statin therapy. Early intervention at this stage, particularly for high-risk individuals, could significantly reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease and prevent heart attacks and strokes. By incorporating non-fasting lipid panels, ethnic-specific screening, and emerging lipid markers into routine assessments, the guidelines aim to improve the precision and accessibility of cardiovascular risk management. Ultimately, the guidelines underscore the importance of personalized treatment approaches, Statin therapy should not be a one-size-fits-all solution, but tailored to each patient's unique risk profile. For those with conditions such as familial hypercholesterolemia, diabetes, or CKD, statins remain a crucial part of the treatment strategy. By embracing these updated guidelines, clinicians can more effectively manage cardiovascular risk and enhance patient outcomes, particularly in those aged 40 and older. Age 40 may be the new threshold for initiating statin therapy in high-risk individuals. The shift to non-fasting lipid panels allows for more accurate, convenient screening. Emerging lipid markers like APOB and lipoprotein A provide better risk stratification than LDLC alone. Shared decision-making ensures that patients are informed and engaged in their treatment choices. Ethnic-specific risk factors must be considered in cholesterol management strategies. The 2025 Cholesterol Guidelines offer a comprehensive, evidence-based approach to managing cardiovascular risk and may significantly reduce the incidence of CVD with earlier, more proactive intervention. Thank you for watching this Global RPH presentation. If you found the content valuable, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. Your support helps us continue delivering high-quality, evidence-based medical content tailored to healthcare professionals like you. We have more in-depth topics and clinical insights coming soon, so stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.